Real questions, real answers for real life. Come on in and pull up a chair. You're at 1850 Main Street with Michael Del Giorno and David Zanotti. Is RFK Jr. a legitimate primary challenger for Joe Biden? That's the question today on 1850 Main Street. So this has got to be a tough question for you because the memory banks have got to be flowing uh, because of your background in regards to Jack and Bobby Kennedy. Come on, that, that was that was your golden era, man. I have always been fascinated and love to talk about because, you know, most people think, well, it's us versus them. And if we could just win, America will be fine. Well, I could make a case to you that if you really want to influence the change of America, you should be praying more for Democrats than Republicans. You should be trying to influence Democrats more than Republicans. If the Democrat Party would change, it would lead to the greatest change in America. And so what I often love to look at, the fascinating pendulum is from John F. Kennedy, not just to Jimmy Carter or to Barack Obama or to Joe Biden. I mean, that's a wide pendulum in a lifetime. Think of the pendulum between John F. Kennedy and his brother, Ted. Oh, That's an, a, from the same wow. womb. Wow. What an amazing pendulum that is. And then there's RFK Jr., who's somewhere in between, isn't he, David? Well, yeah, and just that pendulum swing it immediately flashed and I, something into my mind. You think of uh, Profiles in Courage in PT-109 and JFK uh, in the United States Senate and then uh, JFK running for the office and winning um, however, illegally that election was conducted in Illinois. Oh, there you go again. However, that happened to you know just just with with Cook County and all that stuff. But they, look, he won. He won at Fair and Square, and he had a fastest getaway car in Cook County. So, by the way, Nixon ran as the liberal. Kennedy ran as the conservative. That's that's very much true, and it was very it freaks a lot of people, people out. Yeah, it really does. And so uh, you fast forward, and then I'm thinking of the last time I saw Ted Kennedy was sitting a few seats down on the front row of the Supreme Court when we were in a case before the U.S. Supreme Court on school choice. On school choice. You go from PT-109 to school choice and the Zellman case in 2002. That is a long amount of time in American public policy. And now we're to RFK Jr. Let's do it this way. Uh, and I really think that John F. Kennedy inspired Ronald Reagan in many, many ways. In fact, yeah, I think you're the, right. very, the tax cuts... Uh, that Reagan was famous for uh, were first done by Jack Kennedy. I think he was a big part of Ronald Reagan switching uh, to the Republican Party eventually. But is there a Republican today more conservative than John F. Kennedy? Yeah, I think there there are. But let's ask ourselves, is there anyone that's electable? And, and, and where are they in public life and public service right now? And is there is there one anyone on the political horizon running for the presidency that's as conservative in policies as JFK was? I mean, you're right. He you he well. And I'll ask the question another way: If JFK was running today as a Democrat, could he get elected? No, wouldn't be a Democrat. Yeah, uh, he would be right of Ronald Reagan. So just people love to say Reagan, Lincoln, you know, the the party. Uh, leaders. I, I think Kennedy would be right of both of them. But let's get to RFK Jr. He is different from all of them, isn't it? And I think I have a more fascinating angle coming up. But just in general, what, what does he, you've been doing this for decades, this oddity that he's throwing at the Democrats, how will this play? Well, first off, it's history. I mean, we remember that uh, Bobby Kennedy was pressing in on the nomination the year that Lyndon Baines Johnson decided he wasn't going to run for a second term. And, and I think many people contend that the reason Johnson wasn't going to run for a second term was because he knew he was going to get beat. And so Bobby Kennedy w won the California primary. He was, he was on a roll, and, and then he tragically was shot and killed. So there's a certain sense of the Kennedys entering into, and, and Ted Kennedy was challenging. Ted Kennedy challenged Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. This is in the family tradition. Uh, in other words, they take their credibility, their name recognition, and in essence, the romance of their story. And they apply it for leverage. The father dying, uh, two brothers being assassinated has slowed a lot of that aggressive momentum down. You and I have talked a lot on the golf course about Joe Biden really isn't Jimmy Carter. He's more LBJ. And the problem is, unlike LBJ, Joe Biden won't go away. So he's got all these challenges, his age, his cognitive ability, his failed policy. You saw that. One poll that was done in Maryland, and I love that governor in Maryland. I think he's a superstar for the Democrats in the future. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. We have a timeout on edit. You say you love the governor in Maryland? Well, let me, let me rephrase that. 
I think he's a, a upcoming superstar. I, I think he is a very, very dangerous future politician. I don't love him in terms okay, of. Okay. Okay. All right. I like him to go far. Yeah. Cause I just read an article. I just read an article about him. It terrified me. Okay. Yeah. No, but I mean, he's more charismatic than Barack Obama and he's got a better, less mysterious background than Barack Obama. So the Democrats will be loving him. But, but that poll was like anybody but Joe Biden, 41%. So Joe's got a lot of problems heading into this primary. And now he's got an RFK problem to boot because RFK is saying things like this. You know, both parties have lost their way. And my party, the Democratic Party, has become the party of war. It's become the party of censorship. It's become the party of pharmaceutical companies, of, you know, the neocons, this very aggressive, belligerent uh, foreign policy, that's forever wars, turning our backs on the American middle class, which is the only thing that sustains democracy. And the middle class has just been wiped out in this country and nobody's talking about it. It's really, you know, and I think that's why, you know, Trump was so popular is he, you know, was talking, he was the one guy who was talking to those people and, you know, and he's saying, and they're angry because nobody's listening to him. And uh, and Trump said, you know, I, I'm listening to you and I'm going to go break things for you. And they are angry and they want things to get broken. The thing about um, RFK is first look, central casting. Yeah, he's a Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Good head of hair, great forehead, great chin, the whole thing. Interestingly, ironically, as life would have it, he does have a distinctive voice, but it's not the Kennedy voice because it's what everyone expects would come out from a historical perspective, but he's got that challenge with his vocal cords. Therefore, he's got that sound in his voice. Now, it, it, I want to be careful in which terms that we use. Okay, that's not really a health issue. That's an unfortunate challenge he's worked his way through in life. With, and so he's earned a lot of respect for that, and he's not let that hold him back. So there is a little bit of that, and the reason I bring that up is because as the television era dawned upon the American presidency, Jack and Bobby Kennedy were Camelot. They were central casting. They defined reality. And they did come in in the swashbuckling days of black and white and, and, and TV and movie stars, and they were the political movie stars. So there's kind of that sense of magic around the name. Just look at the signs when you see the yard sign or you see the bumper sticker, you see the poster in the, in the campaign rallies. It's like you stop and go, wow. Well, most people think that John F. Kennedy won the presidential election because of that first televised debate, not cheating in Cook County. Others have agreed both. But here's the, <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's the point I wanted to make uh, that I think is really interesting in this whole scenario. And that is if all distractions are about Donald Trump and all distractions are about litigation in court cases and statutes, here's RFK prosecuting the case Donald Trump should be prosecuting, but is too busy getting prosecuted to prosecute. I mean, that's a beautiful wrinkle. Well, he's definitely stealing the forgotten man rhetoric that made the 2016 campaign so effective for Donald Trump. There's no, no doubt about it. And he's doing it from sort of the historical position of Camelot. So granted, he isn't sitting around boasting about his billions. I sincerely doubt that he has that kind of money. I, I, I've never checked, but I, I don't think so. So it's not a question of wealth on wealth. It's not like uh, Mark Cuban entering the race and now it's Cuban versus Trump and it's the, you know, it's the war of the billionaires. This is different. This is a legacy candidate. And so people are going to take the candidacy seriously because of respect for the legacy. It's what we do. So they kind of bring one out of the Hall of Fame, so to speak. And now you got to say, okay, what's this all about? So Donald Trump was very strong attracting independence with that forgotten man strategy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. RFK has a chance to capture a lot of independence on the Demo Democrat-leaning independence and Republican independence. And then there's all these Democrats who want anybody but Biden, and they have no other choice than RFK. So not to dance around the question, could this pick up steam? Could this be an embarrassing problem for Joe Biden? All it's going to take is a couple of primary surprises. Don't forget, Joe was what, fourth in Iowa, sixth in New Hampshire? He wasn't a quick start the first time. One of these guys' favorite president is JFK. The other's favorite president is George Washington. Care to take a guess which is which? To learn more about Michael and David, visit 1850MainStreet.com.
we've got two questions here. Uh, first off, can RFK Jr. make a credible run across the primary states in the Democrat primaries and defeat Joe Biden somewhere? That's it's kind of like what happens. You know, it's like a heavyweight fight. The president of the United States has got Air Force One. He's the champ. He's got the title until somebody takes it away from him. Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to knock the champ down. He, he, he's, you know, down goes Frazier, okay? He's, he's, he's got to go down in some state somewhere. So the, the primary schedules will be a big part of that challenge. Now, what's interesting is that there's already a lot of animus, a lot of uh, anger, angst, et cetera, among the Democrats because of changing the scheduling on the Democrat primaries. So will Kennedy pick a state where somebody's ticked off, like Rhode Island's ticked off because South Carolina is not supposed to go first? Will Kennedy, will RFK Jr. pick that spot and pull a surprise? Once the champ goes down one time, suddenly all the narrative and all the rhetoric changes and the media's got something to watch. You bring up something that's so elementary that people forget it. Whenever you have an incumbent, they have to first be proven to be fired before somebody else can be hired. Yeah. So somebody's got to make the case they deserve to be fired in order to be elected. RFK is doing a better job than really, quite frankly, all the other Republicans are. But I want to bring up the most interesting twist of all of this. I voted for Donald Trump twice. I don't regret it. His policies were great. He did make America great. Uh, he made some mistakes, COVID being one of the big ones, January 6th. Not that it was an insurrection, but not very wise on his part, some of his rhetoric. But there are a lot of people who really, really put him above the party. I mean, he's bigger than the game to them. Yeah. It's Donald Trump or we don't have a presidency. Well, Donald Trump, that kind of Donald Trump support is also linked to being anti-COVID. And Donald Trump made most of the COVID mistakes. RFK is going to make that crystal clear. We've even seen DeSantis early on go to that very sore scab and rip at it. RFK, does he present some problems for Donald Trump too? Well, he presents trouble for everybody because the, the American is waiting for a just apology from the people who basically shut down the economy and nearly killed our country. Because the truth of the matter is now in retrospect, the historians will write the, the truth of the matter is that it was unnecessary. Just like the people who wrote about the Spanish flu uh, came back to say after 1918 and in the, in the period after the war that they will say it was a mistake. The things that they did to try to remediate the problem were a mistake. They were not helpful and productive. A five trillion dollar mistake. Uh, well, it, and and it goes on. I mean, it it, it, it was yeah, it. never mind. Never mind depression, suicide. I'm talking. But people get fired. Yeah. Whoever oh, yeah. said Anheuser Busch and came up with that bad Bud Light ad, you know that that's how you get fired. Five trillion dollars. Well, it destroyed the airlines. It was COVID that destroyed the airlines. So who are you going to fire? Because both Biden and Trump are guilty. This is a great play for RFK is the point I'm making. Oh, and, and until somebody says, look, this was handled poorly and all these people. Now, if Trump doesn't come clean with the American people and explain to them what really truly happened to, to him as a leader and how he did get fooled and tricked. And if Trump doesn't come clean on Big Pharma and the tens of billions of dollars that they made and all the things that went wrong with that without being held harmless at all, then RFK is going to make that point. And that point is going to hurt Donald Trump as the Republican nominee because there are people who lost everything. Just as many people who believe Donald Trump is the only one who in, in RFK's uh, terms can go in there and break stuff which I think is a great analogy. It's right. exactly the one we used recently that, uh, that we wrote about. We said, this is what, what Trump does. He goes in and breaks stuff and then figures out, you know, okay, we get that. There's a certain, certain theater to that, but he's already broke a lot of stuff and there's a lot of lives that are still broken because of it. Somebody has got to say, we were wrong, we're sorry. It's not that he doesn't do it well. It's that he never really does it at all. Mia Copas and Donald Trump don't go hand in hand. Mm. He should come clean and say, I trusted Fauci. And that was a mistake when he was telling me it was nothing. It was the cold. It wasn't even going to get here. Everybody go to the Super Bowl. And then I trusted him when he told me 2 million would die by Easter. I was wrong to trust him every step of the way. That's what he needs to do. But do you really think Donald Trump would do that? Do you remember the day that he made that Easter decision? You and I yes. were on the phone and I was, I was, I was, I didn't know what to say. I was speechless because he walked out to, to say, 
this is how we're going to handle it. It was the moment, the turning point. They called him back in, sat him down at the desk, told him 2 million people were going to die if they didn't get that their way, showed him another phony model. He bought it, changed his path. That's when he lost the election because that step began the statewide changes on election laws that turned out into creating a barrage of voting coming in by mail, ballot harvested, early voting, absentee voting, live ballots sent out. The politicians in the state houses and the governors went crazy changing elections to fit the COVID narrative. And Trump never saw that shoe dropping until it was too late. That's when the election went haywire. It wasn't election machine fraud. It wasn't 2,000 mules. That, that No, no, no. It was when they changed the laws to set all those opportunities up. They greenlit the whole process. In fact, it reminded me of Cook County in the original Kennedy election back in the 60s. It was amazing just how many people showed up with walking around money. You're actually going to let me get away with that one, aren't you? I thought I'm waiting for the corpses and the zombies <laughs> and everybody else to show I'm really glad we're having this conversation on RFK because he's starting to go viral. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm seeing it on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, uh, and I'm seeing it among the conservatives. They like him calling it out. Remember, we had a conversation not long ago about Donald Trump really needs to let the law be the law because it's probably not courtroom drama. It's probably political theater. He needs to campaign and run for president because if he's only defending himself and talking about himself, nobody's holding Joe Biden accountable for all of his fall uh, failures as a president. RFK is going to do that. Is it possible that RFK is running an independent campaign, an everyday man campaign, and he's going to hurt both Biden and Trump equally? And what does that create? What comes out of the oven nine months from now with that? Yeah, it's a very fair question, uh, and it's not inconceivable. We don't know what his funding level is to actually conduct a truly independent campaign, which can be done. I mean, Ross Perot and other people have done it. Uh, Ralph Nader did it. It's it's not the worst thing that could happen. And if someone understood the strategic potential of running an independent campaign in just 15 key states, because if a person were to win, say, in four or five of those states— they would literally create a situation where neither of the two major parties could get elected. And so there's there's it, there's all kinds of dynamics in this process based upon the Electoral College. But I think that Kennedy's ultimate game is not going to play well once people understand the deeper positions on where he stands on the, on the life question, where he stands on the protection of all innocent life throughout all nine months of pregnancy, where he stands on the question of Citizens United free speech in regards to permitting people to do what they want to do according to the Supreme Court's understanding that free speech is free speech, even if it is political speech. He falls back to the radical left and their moorings on, on key issues that once are uncovered, people are going to say, that's not the kind of person we want appointing Supreme Court justices. So that's going to be the place where he hits the wall. So will he be able to be the credible person that basically moves Joe Biden off the scene and becomes a Democrat nominee, who knows? Well, if he's actually the nominee of the Democrat Party, who will he be running against? And how will people in the electorate interpret that campaign and that candidacy? In other words, what's it look like if it's RFK Jr. and DeSantis? No one's even profiled that. No one's even thought about that. To me, the biggest, the, the most interesting, compelling scenario is RFK running and then let's say he he has a big win or I, so I disagree with you in that. I think not only does he need a couple of big wins, he needs them early. Oh, yeah. Because you you know how that plays out. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's got to so, knock the champ down and, quick. And we, yeah. And we know how Soros and, and yeah. Podesta, they all play the game. So when there was an outsider election formed, that was doomsday for Hillary. Uh, but what they do? Well, they just use superdelegates to keep Bernie from winning. And then with Biden, they cut the deal in South Carolina to keep Bernie from winning. So my assumption is that Bernie Sanders ran, Bernie Sanders will get the nomination again. That's what the Democrats, that's the levy, the damn, the levy is trying to hold back the waters of, of the far left. So my interesting scenario is, all right, let's say RFK does take him out. Where does that leave Democrats? Because they want something far left of RFK and far left of Joe Biden. In fact, they're trusting the puppets behind the scenes that are really calling the shots are far left of Biden. Well, and this is why South Carolina has been moved to the first place in the line of the primaries. It's because it was South Carolina that was the place that the deal was cut that gave Joe Biden the nomination last time with the Black Caucus. And South Carolina was the key state. 
They're starting with that this time. Which is smart, too, because sure. Biden was weak in Iowa. He was weak in New Hampshire. Yeah. That would have given RFK or anybody a chance to take him out early. And they made this move a months ago. So before RFK really even was was a serious contender, they made this move to protect. That goes back to Soros and 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 Podesta. They're not messing around here. They've got the uh, they've got Air Force One. Whoever's got Air Force One, big advantage in a presidential election is a big advantage, and they're not about to squander it or throw it away. So RFK is he is he a real player is he is he in for the is he in for the real deal is he going to stick through and what's it look like I don't know but we're seeing something that is really out of the legacy vault yeah well I mean we talk about um, Ramaswamy for example uh, he, I'm glad you can a, say his name I'm I won't even try I hope he's got a good nickname I love him he could win my vote yet but no I think he's going to be more of a narrative setter yeah you know and and so I think he'll play a role in setting the conversation. I, could he actually get more votes than DeSantis and Trump? I don't think so, but he's going to play a big role in the conversation. I kind of felt like that's where RFK was coming from, and I thought it was an interesting little twist. If I don't think the, I think the left wants Donald Trump, so I don't know that I buy this, but he's a good force to out Trump because he forces the anti-COVID Trump lovers to come to grips with themselves on what Trump did to them as Trump refuses to apologize. So I think it's kind of an interesting agitation, but I just saw him as a narrative setter. I guess I would go on record as saying, and I know he just raised $5 million just last week, which is significant money. And he's starting to have his little window of opportunity in terms of social media. Uh, I'm going to say no, that um, he's not going to be a long-term factor. And as I say that, I got my fingers crossed, my legs crossed, hoping that he is. Well, and, and here's the thing. Were you being rhetorical and I gave you an answer? <laughs> what about the Joe Rogan piece? That was a surprise. Rogan jumped quickly. What, what, what about Elon Musk? What I'm interested in is why are players who have potential to make this a new kind of election really taking time to listen to this guy? I think that's the thing we got to watch too, because is it possible that there is, is he the technocracy candidate or is there a lane with people that have the ability to change the way we do elections to get outside the bounds, is is Kennedy about to become their latest experiment? Something smells fishy, that's for sure. You know, you talk about lanes. Here's an interesting final scenario. What if it was a three-person race with Biden, RFK, and Trump or DeSantis? Why didn't he run as an independent for that reason, right? Boy, that is a great question. That is a really strong question. I, I think the polling on that would be very intriguing. So if he goes through the primary process and he doesn't win the primary, he could still turn around just like Trump could turn around if he doesn't win the primary and run as an independent. Then what do you have? Yeah. And we got to watch the timing because a lot of times the states will pull tricky dates on their ability, on your ability to get on the ballot by such and such a time. So we've got to check on state qualifications to be able to enter as an independent after having run as a primary candidate in one of the parties. So that's that's a part of the formula. So, And I don't know how that's going to work this year because they haven't decided out on all the de different details. But yeah, I think it's possible. I think it's an interesting scenario to consider Trump versus Biden versus RFK Jr. It'd be fun. The other thing is we all know what the cabal looks like, right? Uh, the two main media ownership groups, uh, Comcast and, and so on. Then you got the technocrats and the elites, and then you got the grass tops and the grassroots and the far left, and then the, the progressive left. Um, maybe they're not all on the same page. Maybe RFK, to, I'm just going by what you said, uh, and the discernment made my alarms go off. Maybe his presence and where I'm seeing him go viral is proof that the technocrats at the cabal table are not liking moving forward with Joe Biden. And they're not, they're not sticking to the script given to them by Soros and Podesta. Yeah, I mean, there might be a mutiny among them. Well, and, and RFK Jr. might be the disruptive technology. He might be the element nobody sees coming. The conversations are just getting started. To get connected, check out 1850mainstreet.com. We don't data mine anyone or sell your information. Subscribe today so you don't miss a single conversation. We'll see you next time here at 1850 Main Street.